Hello and welcome to another edition of EFLUX Insights. My name is Barbara Khan. I'm the entrepreneur in residence for this program. We are joined today by uh, with uh, Stephen Meher, the CEO of uh, Meher Birds Associates, uh, also known as MBA, and he's also coincidentally the chairman of the Marketing Society in the UK. As you remember, we spoke to Hugh Burkett last week, and this week we're talking about Stephen. But the the topic of this discussion is all things brand, all things agency, and his work at MBA. So thanks for being with us, Stephen. Pleasure. Good to see you. So, Steve, could you tell us about your uh, your background, uh, where you studied, and your experiences thus far? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, I I, I started out. Um, you know, I, I went to school. I went to university. I studied modern history at Oxford, which uh, you know you kind of think that's a bit weird. You know, why would you study modern history and then go into the communications business? But I suppose that's the British educational system. You know, you study what you love doing. And I love doing history. And, and then I got to my last year at university and I thought to myself, what do I, I want to do with my life? And I thought about media and communications and marketing. And I applied to the BBC and a whole range of different places. And I got really ex inspired by and excited by advertising, marketing, and communications. And of course, this is a pre digital world as well, but I got really inspired by it. So I applied for loads of jobs and, and I went for that and I ended up in uh, working in various agencies. And, and one of my first agencies was. Uh, an agency called Abbott Mead Vickers BBDO, which is now, I think, the largest uh, agency in, in the UK. And I had some, you know, worked some great places and, and some good training. But I suppose I've always been a bit of an entrepreneur at heart, really. And um, I've always wanted to do my own thing. And so uh, eventually I was working in an agency, a very successful kind of creative hotshot called Simon's Palmer. And, and I did a joint venture with them. And, uh, you know, we set up uh, what was Mayor Bird Associates, which is now we call, you know, MBA. Um, and, uh, you know, I took it from there. And, um, you know, the, the business is, is developed very well over the last few years. We've been through a couple of iterations. We, we spent a period of time where we were part owned by Omnicom because uh, the business that, uh, that we did a joint venture with got bought by Omnicom. We always own 50% of it or 49% of it, but Omnicom owned the rest. So about seven years ago, uh, I took the decision to buy ourselves out of Omnicom and go totally independent. And that's uh, what we are now, widen the share ownership of the business because as we know in our business, you know, ownership is really important and, and I want to have make sure my second tier management team have absolutely got ownership and equity in the business and they, and they have now. So we're now totally independent. And I'm really proud to say that we've been uh, selected the last two years by uh, Campaign Magazine and Network One as one of the world's leading independent agencies. And uh, independence is really important to us. Um, and um, so, yeah, I mean, my background is, is um, you know, working in agencies uh, all my life, um, working in a lot of international business, but, but essentially located in London. Um, and, um, you know, I think the most exciting thing obviously has been happening in the last 10 years with the explosion of digital and that's where really uh, this is probably the most dynamic time I can ever remember the industry being. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it has really changed the game, especially on the measurement side. But uh, like I've never worked in ATL, so could you tell me a bit about how measurement or justification of spend would be done on the ATL side in uh, on, on, from the agency front and from the brand front? Yeah, I mean, it's quite interesting because I, I think in many ways there's probably a, a legacy, particularly in, in uh, the UK by the IPA. You know, you're probably aware the IPA is a sort of agency body organisation. And the IPA Effectiveness Awards, which are probably, you know, some of the best kind of Oscars globally around effectiveness, have got phenomenal um, uh, uh, data around the effectiveness of advertising in a classical sense through television and press and the posters and various other things. And actually put less so in digital, interestingly. Um, but, so I would say the justification is, is pretty solid there. There's some great ROI case studies proving the effectiveness of spending you know, several million dollars on TV and posters, uh, looking at via econometrics, looking, removing all the, uh, in, the variables to arrive at data, which proves the fact that uh, you know, advertising and communication was the determinant of success of a particular brand. But, but I think that what, what is now happening is there's an area that uh, I'm, I and we as MBA are very involved with through the IPA, which is called uh, IPA Social Works. Uh, right. I'm the chair of this group. And IPA Social Works, we've got Twitter, we've got uh, various client organizations involved, the marketing societies involved. And essentially what that's about is applying the rigor 
that traditionally applies to uh, advertising and above the line to social in terms of measurement and in terms of metrics. And we're working that through at the moment, developing best practice uh, for judging uh, and, and proving the effectiveness of social, which we all know works, but we want to prove absolutely prove it, yeah. the ROI on it and we want to have the right measurement frameworks in place. All right, uh, and, and you mentioned uh, that you've been uh, nominated and you've won awards from Campaign Magazine. How, how, how does, uh, if I want to start up an agency, it's going to take me years to get to your level, but suppose uh, uh, I want to be yeah. even nominated, uh, what is the criteria by which they assess and what was the basis of which you had won? Well, I, th I think that, I mean, what, what, they, what they do every year is they, they look at, uh, um, you know, there's a particular area, they look at the world's leading independent agencies, um, and uh, they develop a, a supplement in Campaign Magazine uh, with Network One, which is, uh, a net, uh, you know, the, 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 the largest, uh, uh, foremost uh, agency, independent agency network around, which we're part of, and they collaborate and they take a view about, by, in the, by different regions of the country, of the world rather, uh, they select one or two agencies uh, and they arrive at, uh, I think, roughly 13 or 14 agencies around the world. The okay. selection criteria I expect is, is, you know, what agencies are particularly hot at the moment, uh, who's developing particularly unusual thinking, who's doing exciting work, uh, you know, I mean, it's also the judgment that they make. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I think it's, it's also about being progressive and, and you know, Clearly, our business is all about, as is all agencies these days, it's all about digital, it's all about social, and, uh, you know, that's the lion's share of our output. But I think that, uh, you know, which I can talk more about, is for us, it's, you know, it's also really building on the tech side of things. It's really making sure that uh, we're absolutely at the forefront of, of all things digital. Ashley, uh, if anyone would uh, go through your website, uh, that was one of the things that struck out uh, the most when researching about your company and also researching into you. It's very rare if you look if you look at the website of a company as a form of their own advertising. It's very rare that you see so much focus on tech. Uh, your yeah. website, if it if it's got if there's ten common catchphrases in, on the site, digital and tech comes up more than anything else. <laughs> Uh, I yes. hardly saw media planning and media buying and all that other jargon that comes into it or content marketing. I, I generally did not see any of this. Right. Even okay. in the like the most prominent case study in the work we do in the portfolio section is the technology work. It's not about uh, we ran this one campaign that raised awareness. That's fine, raising awareness and all. But it's very rare to find an agency that too uh, coming from an old school mindset but somehow you've adopted or sometimes somehow you've grown beyond what the agency norm was and you're yeah. focusing on building technology and capabilities of your own and also implementing that for your clients. You also have the case studies to prove their value. So that's that's actually uh, one of the main reasons we selected uh, you for uh, this panel because uh, we are all about interviewing or speaking to people who are tech driven and yeah. also they're utilizing that for measurable returns as opposed to just you know everyone's doing it so let's do it as well. Yeah. Um, all right, so that's uh, absolutely we... right. I mean, just a comment on that, Robert. I, I think that sure. you know that that is absolutely right. And I mean, it's it's this the, the cleverness, of course, is that. And I know it's been talked about quite a lot, but it's that confluence, isn't it, of creativity and technology. And absolutely. I think that that is that is absolutely where it's all happening, where the excitement is. And you know, if you come from, as you describe it, a kind of you know old school world. Basically, if you're over the age of forty, which unfortunately I am, I know it's difficult to see, see that, but actually I am. But I think that, you know, if you come from that sort of age group, then you realize that basically, you know, all the skills around creativity and strategy and behavioral understanding the psychology of customers all absolutely applies. You know, at the end of the day, it's about ideas, it's about content. But the difference now is that we've got the technology which can drive it, which can bring it to life and do fantastic things and can speed it up, can get to mass scale and do all the stuff we want to do. So, so actually, the bringing those two things together is really, you know, what it's all about at the moment, and that's the excitement, really. I think, from from our point of view, um, and that's why, you know, it's something we talk about quite a lot. I think the key is that, you know, it's because it's so embedded in everyone's culture now that that the experience, you know, the, the expectation from consumers is that the digital experience is going to be a fantastic experience. So that's why, you know, in our view, you know, it's all about the bringing together of, of creativity, creativity, thinking and strategy with technology. And let's say this, let's say basically the customer experience 
and the digital experience are intertwined. They are basically the same thing now, you know, and, yeah. you know, it, it absolutely has to work. We know that from Apple, we know that from Amazon. I mean, you know, Amazon, you know, Love Film by Amazon is, is one of our clients. We know how amazing Amazon are at their recommendations, their, you know, their, their right. Rex and Sims, as they call it. We know how, how they make it a wonderful, easy uh, experience for customers. And I think that's that's the key. And and what we're finding is that um, you know we made a, a we made an acquisition in the UK uh, early last year. We bought uh, a, a very uh, progressive, uh, cool tech shop in in Brighton, actually, in, in the south coast of England, where there's a real right. tech hub going on there. And one of the reasons we did that is they got a fantastic experience uh, in in a lot of areas of technology and app development and e-commerce. You know, we want to have even more capability in that area because we know that's what it's all about. You know, we're seeing, you know, fantastic developments there working for our clients like Embraer, uh, Avios, the British Airways uh, 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 travel reward scheme. You know, O2 is one of our clients. Um, uh, and we, we're really finding that um, the excitement is all around this area. It's all around finding uh, ways of bringing to life um, the, you know, the customer experience through digital. That's exactly, I mean, uh, you really hit the nail on the head, and I'm hearing this from pretty much everyone who's a leader in this space or, or who, is, uh, who is aspiring to be a leader in this space. So even our, our last interview with Jeff Schumacher, right. CEO of Boston Consulting, he said the exact same thing. I asked him, what kind of digital campaigns do you want to work on? He said, before I even start thinking from the client side, what I need to look at, well, he said, obviously, the client side is important, but he said, before I even go out to the client, and before I even try to sell them anything, I need to develop the capabilities in-house, and I need to buy technology that yeah. I can push to them uh, further. So, That's like right. for example, our our parent company does more or less the same thing, but they're they do more work on the West Coast side than they do on right. the East Coast. I mean, Boston and all is on the does more business on the East Coast. Uh, they have stuff like they have they have an application that tracks location, and that can be okay. used for a multitude of things, from everything from attendance all the way down to coming up with some sort of scavenger hunt. Uh, amazing race esque game. I mean, there's a bunch of things you can obviously do with it from a fun perspective, and also from making your employees hate you because you're tracking their attendance. Something or the other. Uh, yeah. So there's obviously there there's a big ch a change, and you're one of the few people, like even Jeff, who's mentioned that for, first we're going to develop the capabilities in house. So once yeah. we understand what goes on behind the development of that tech, then we will move on to trying to sell that. Uh, further and customize it further for the brands or for the companies that we have catered to, and from a corporate and from a consumer branding perspective. Because so, I think that one of you're absolutely right, Bob. Because one of the things that we often talk about is, you know, our, our kind of mantra as an agency is, is, you know, the phrase we use is brand action, and brand action is our way of saying it's the bringing together the art and the science, the bringing together of the creativity, the technology for ultimate action in the marketplace. And very often, what happens in this area, I think, is that you know, you come from a pure technology standpoint, but that that's okay and that's important, but then you've got to understand what's the relevance of that, what's the benefits to the Absolutely. consumer, how I can sell that on, how I can make that work with a client. Vice versa, we might understand the consumer behavior, we don't necessarily know the technology that's going to actually affect it and drive it and serve up the ROI on it. So unless you pull the two together and you, and you make that, I mean, it's an inherent tension, there's no doubt about it in a lot of agencies. There's a tension between you know, highly creative, strategic thinking people and fantastic linear technology people. But the, the brilliance is, is putting the two together, making it work together. You know, that's why I believe you know, this agency is all about, and that's what I believe you know, future agencies are all about. Because unless you can make that fit and make those work together harmoniously and make the creative people and the technology people really understand each other and work together, you know, there is no future in an agency. That's certainly my view anyway. And uh, interesting enough, my next question was going to be, uh, how, what sets MBA apart from the rest of the agencies? And I guess we just covered that. Uh, the yeah. fact that you're yeah. thinking that far ahead, where you know that you need to be able to develop those capabilities in-house. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. like, for example, I see, uh, what, along with Eflux Insights, I have a lot of speaking engagements and mentoring engagements. And what I've started doing over the past year I'll be meeting a small business, or I'll meet a, I'll meet a medium size or growing business, and they'll be talking about, oh, we need uh, we need a social media, digital media strategy, and we need to outsource this. And my usual advice to them is pretty much shooting myself in the foot. I say I don't tell them, yeah, sure, I'll uh, I'll refer an agency to you. I say develop it in house, develop your capabilities in house, or at least develop the understanding in house. So uh, yeah. one of the clients that I've ever worked with, uh, I, it was a food business. I basically advised them 
your call center agents, your head of call center, make him your head of social media engagement, and or you know give him any fancy title to make his ego boost up, or and at the same time make your head of IT build their capabilities in digital marketing. If yeah. even if they're not doing the digital media buying, they should have an understanding of what's going on behind it, because down the road you will that will be an actual department in your company. Even if we just look at something like PNG right now, PNG in Hong Kong is actually doing this. So now they're going to have a digital marketing man, a head of digital marketing within PNG, as opposed yeah. to outsourcing that entire division or entire capability uh, to an agency that hopefully might do a good job or might not. And it's exactly, because I, I, I totally agree. Because because you know you know people say you know what's your digital strategy, what's your direct strategy, what's your communication, yeah. what's your marketing strategy. I mean it is fundamentally the same, you know, isn't it? And it's like. The phrase we often use here is, you know, you know, this agency. You're going back to the point about what's the USP. We talk about, you know, where where digital and direct interconnect, and that's a phrase we often use because basically, you know, what you've got in 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 the ability to do these days is you've got an understanding of all that's great in terms of the, what the web can do in terms of technology can do, but of course, it, you know, when you look at it from a data perspective, you understand customer behaviour and you apply all the rigours that often apply to direct marketing. Then you put the two together. And you can look at accountability, you can look at ROI. And there hasn't been a better time to do that because you can pull those things together. So you're right, it's not about what's a direct strategy, what's an advertising strategy, what's a social strategy. It's 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 what's your marketing communication strategy and, and, and therefore you apply all the rigors and all the capabilities to that. And that really is is the is the key. And and, and unless you look at it in that very sort of you know people used to talk about integrated, you know, and that's really the way you can look at it. Interconnected is a better way of describing it. Unless you look at it the way the consumer looks at it, because you know we look at it like that. As a consumer, we don't think about is it a, is it a social video? Is it a piece of direct marketing? Is it a piece of advertising? Is it a piece of content? Is it digital experience? We think about it as a whole kind of digital. We think about it as a whole experience, and that's the yeah. way I think an agency needs to look at it as well. See again, um, I hardly meet people who will ever talk like this. So that's the <laughs> USP. Yeah, clearly, clearly yeah. stated. I mean. Uh, the expectation is, uh, I've, I've spoken to some CMOs as well, so this, I, I would ask them at the end of the interview that, what would you advise agencies to do? And they say, you know, they should build up the capabilities, and you're already saying that, so really doesn't apply to you anymore. You've all, you're already there, or uh, or one way or the other. So, um, I, I've, I mean, I've seen your work, and uh, people, can, people are encouraged to check out your work. It's on mba.co.uk. But uh, I would like you to, if you could, uh, touch upon um, a case study of the of the best work that you've done in this space where you're talking about uh, digital marketing isn't just for the marketing division, it's for the entire company. The entire company needs to be on board with it, and it, the entire company needs to be able to respond to things that happen on digital and social. So could you talk about some work that you've done in that space? Yeah, sure, yeah. I mean, you know, we've got... Uh... You know a variety. I mean, I just give you a, a couple of examples. Uh, you know, we've got a a uh, a client which is a, a private jet business called Embraer, and they're based in Brazil, but they also, uh, you know, they're, they're essentially an international company. And they're selling all around the world, and not surprisingly, you know, as you can imagine, uh, you know, China at the moment is a big growth market for them with uh, the development of private aerospace, uh, airspace, and everything. So, so it's a, it's a great company, but but actually, what, what we what we did is uh, basically Jackie Chan is is the ambassador uh, who, who in, in, in particularly in China and obviously you know parts of Asia is where he's highly revered. Of course, he has a lot of parts of the world as well. And so what we decided to do there is you know basically develop you know a social video. We decided that the best way of basically promoting this uh, was to you know get, get him involved to do it. We did it like a kind of almost like a trailer for a, a Hollywood film. We did a five minute film, it's on YouTube, he tweets it, he puts it on his 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 uh, his blog. You know, we do a lot of blogger outreach on the back of it. We, we, we put it on the site. We then develop it into something that goes at the shows, you know, to create a whole digital experience around it. And that's a great example. You know, it's not traditional advertising. It's not traditional direct marketing. It's not traditional website. It's about creating this fantastic, lively experience about making people, wetting people's appetite. Because we know what happens, you know, like in so many marketplaces, as I said earlier on, is that people will search everything before they buy now. So... Basically, the web is this amazing treasure trove, isn't it, of all this amazing information that I find out about a brand and I find out about what I want to do before I go and buy. So we know that you know, developing content, video content, uh, or, or blogs, or whatever it might be, is the key to it. Another example I'll just give you is, is uh, 
There's a very famous... As, as uh, many examples as you want to state. Yeah, sure. There's another... There's a famous uh, uh, chef in the UK called Heston Blumenthal, and I know that he's got some, uh, you know, he's got some notoriety around the world now. But he's, uh, you know, he's he's kind of up there. He's one of the best uh, Michelin-starred chefs, and he's developed a, a range of products uh, called Sage by Heston Blumenthal, and basically they're kitchen appliances like juicers, tea makers, coffee makers, upmarket, really really cool stuff. But the key to it is because he's an obsessive kind of food scientist. He's made sure the products are fantastic as well, and so that they they deliver the product, uh, the food, in a brilliant way through the science and the technology. I mean, it's a fantastic, he's a fantastic guy. The brilliant products, and and again, what we've done there is our whole strategy is a social digital strategy where, you know, if you go into a shop and you want to buy a juicer, or you go online and you want to buy a juicer, we know your decision about that juicer will probably be taken before you go into that shop. So we developed a whole load of content films of Hessen Blumenthal uh, t t uh, using his products to develop different fantastic recipes. Again, we've got all sorts of uh, uh, blogs going on around that. You know, we, we've got a whole social kind of PR campaign, making sure that everyone understands what's great about these uh, products. So that again, those decisions, I mean, Google talk about a Zedmot, you know, the zero moment of truth. You know, you take your decision before you go and buy. And I think that's our, our kind of strategy of, of the purchase funnel now is, is that it's, as I say, it's not a funnel, it's an ecosystem. It's about pro providing people all that information on the web in the digital experience before they buy. And they, you know, they just, we got various other examples like that, but that's how we approach um, our business. It's very much content driven, technology driven, uh, and, and ultimately it's about, you know, using data in a way that, that finds our way of getting to the right people because clearly we're going to post these blogs, we're going to post this content in the places we know our audience is, is likely to be. And that's the other great thing, of course, now that, that uh, digital allows us to go to the people that are interested or likely to be interested as opposed to people who are not. That's actually uh, very close to something. Uh, we we I, I, the absolute last interview that I did was with a fellow named Robin Bond. Uh, he's the business development director for right. a, an agency in the UK called Seven, and they are experts in content right. marketing. So the the discussion was around uh, the customer purchase journey from awareness all the way down to call to action, but then how the content differs with each aspect of the customer service journey. So it's not just about awareness building. You also have to be present when there's the alternative search. You have to be present during the purchase process or the and the after sales process when yes. they're advocating or dissonating from your brand. Uh, at the same time, he would he would br bring up this, uh, this aspect where um, Thankfully, now, uh, as as per his admission, there there is a there's a trend all over the world where it's not just about getting a million users on your page. Sometimes you want 1,000 users on your page, 1,000 viewers on your page, but those 1,000 people are the most relevant people. So one of the examples he gave was, for example, Work Market Leader, the magazine itself, uh, gets about 100,000 uh, plus. I'm I'm sure the number is higher, but he was being conservative about it. 100,000 plus readers. Uh, on the on the print edition, uh, but those hundred thousand, they have uh, an immense share of wallet. They have immense uh, say in their businesses in terms of decision making power. So right. it's relevant from that perspective. It doesn't look like a big number, hundred thousand, but what those each hundred thousand represent is also really great. So that's exactly uh, the the brilliant point that you that you brought up there. They're about advocates, content. aren't they? They're they're, they're yeah. advocates of of you know, and, and we know that we can do all sorts of behavioral targeting, contextual targeting, and you know, native advertising. We do all sorts of clever stuff now where we can basically get to the right people. And and I think that's the other thing that. The other, the other area where I think it's important now that, that all agencies absolutely grapple with, uh, and you know, some agencies, you know, have it at their heart, particularly if they've got more of a direct background, you know, a lot of, a lot of which, which we've got, where data, you know, you've really got to understand, you know, the, the well, basically, it's basically implicit and explicit behavior, isn't it? It's about understanding that, you know, we can actually track what people really do. But also what we can do is we can look at those kind of people, what they typically do. So if we pull the two together, pull all the social data together, we've got all this fantastic way of reaching the right people with the right content. And, and you're absolutely right. That is the key, mapping that journey out in a way that we know that people uh, people are going to respond to. And and you also brought up a different, an, another point that was, um, hits the nail on the head. I mean, you're the third person I'm hearing this from, of the interviews I've done so far. So Rob brought this up, even Jeff brought it up. Uh, there is brand awareness oriented marketing. 
but then there's content marketing and content marketing isn't about for example Rob brought it up that a lot of people believe it's just videos it's it's beyond what you do with the video it's yeah. what does the yeah. video allow the customer to do so it's no longer about brands here's a, a phone for you it'll allow you to make calls the phone must be doing something more it must yes. add some value so the brand the content marketing is about how the brand benefits you not why it benefits you the why is communicated in the ad the how yes. and how you can utilize it the different ways of you can, you can use it that all comes into there that's a great uh, way so, of looking at it yeah I totally agree with that uh, and uh, so you you've done work from, from like the Jackie Chan example the the, uh, the the secondary example that you gave uh, this all affects uh, on, on the awareness and the brand affinity side and uh, even even the example you just gave on uh, the fellow, I, I believe I've seen him a couple of times on MasterChef Australia. Yeah, I think he's, he's done right. some crazy things with uh, yeah. with liquid nitrogen and making ice cream. That's right, exactly. Back. That's the guy. He's great. He's, he's amazing. That's the guy. He's yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, I can see the immediate ROI on that side. But for the, yeah. for the Jackie Chan example, what was the kind of ROI the brand got out of it uh, in terms of brand affinity, equity building, and at the end of the day, sales is what yeah. people usually look at. But can you tell me a bit more about that? Like, what was sure, the outcome? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, what, what you're trying to do there is you're trying to warm up a sale. So, you know, you're talking about, you know, private jets that range from anywhere between $20 million to $50 million. So clearly, you know, one or two sales, it, it creates a fantastic ROI. What we're really doing is we're, we're creating the right environment. We're, we're warming up the potential sale from a salesman when he, when he has a direct contact or he can, he can, you know, we, we know the kind of people that are, are looking at our, our content. We know the kind of people that are tracking. People phone up on the back of it. We obviously attribute, you know, we attribute uh, that particular warm lead uh, based on the activity they've seen so we can track all that. Um, so, you know, it's, it's in all our communications, you know, it, we're, we're understandably passionate about how we know that the dollar spent is going to return two dollars or three dollars. And, you know, we're not going to do anything that, that we can't prove that. And, and I think that's, again, the big change in a good way that's taken place probably in the last decade in our industry where, you know, accountability is absolutely critical. Everyone knows that, you know, it, partly because of the recession that took place, particularly in, you know, in Europe and in America, but also for the right reasons. Everyone knows that unless I can prove a return on investment, then I'm not going to do anything. And, you know, every board is asking that question uh, in every company, uh, rightly so. Uh, and so, uh, you know, every, every dollar spent has got to be returned. Uh, really, that that was going to be the next question about uh, you know this this in the new era where uh, CMOS are all about measurability and accountability, being yeah. able to track back the lead, trying to figure out why a thousand people came to your site. For example, we just talked about e-commerce for a bit. Uh, people are coming to a site. Maybe the objective of the site is not to maybe uh, have people sign up. Maybe just to build awareness on a certain product, and then there'll be a quiz around what did you understand or what did you get out of out of this. Or maybe they want you to take part in some sort of um, prize or some sort of contest. And the, the general perception is, if there's a prize or a contest, people will sign up. But then there's some people who don't. Uh, you'll you'll track a million people come to your site, and maybe 90, 80 percent is the bounce rate. So people need to people need to figure that out why. So my now follow up question was going to be with the advent of technology like. Uh, I asked the same question of Jeff, and he had a very interesting answer. With the advent of technology like uh, Adobe Marketing Cloud uh, and the Adobe Experience Manager within it, how do you see uh, this particular measure measurability aspect being affected in terms of because it gives you really deep insights, the Adobe Marketing Cloud? Uh, how do you see this uh, the ability for us to measure the outcome of marketing campaigns being affected as a result of these technologies? And how do you, as agency people, uh, change your pitch or maybe augment your pitch for the client? Uh, for keeping the, these things in mind. Okay, well, I think that, you know, let, let me answer that in sort of um, a couple of ways. I think that, first of all, uh, you know, the essence of, of our business at MBA, you know, we always talk about being ROI driven. I mean, for us, because, you know, we've got a very strong kind of direct background here, that, uh, you know, for us, it, it is all about absolutely measuring the effectiveness, whatever that might be, however we do that, whether it's awareness or lead generation or sales or, 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 or KP, whatever the KPIs are. So, We'll always do that. The brilliance now, of course, with those kind of measurement tools that you mentioned, or there's a whole range of different tools, you know, social listening tools and various things, by, by putting those all together and creating, you know, I know it's a bit of jargon with a whole kind of world of big data, but by the looking at all this data, we can actually create, construct a fantastic uh, uh, patchwork of, of, of data that allows us to understand, as I say, 
what our customers are doing, why they're doing it, why they're hitting a particular site. Now, I think that the slight change, to say, comes around the fact that, you know, gone are the days where you literally, you know, you respond to something, I track the number of leads, and then I look at the conversion, and then I look at the sales. Because we know that, as I said earlier on, people are researching information, and so you need to look at, you know, if somebody hits a site or they go and look at a piece of content, you know, that you are warming them up. And then obviously, but we know who they are, potentially, if, if assuming that we've got that information, they're happy for us to have that information. We'll track that lead. We'll find out what they're going to do. They might come back, you know, a couple of weeks later. Um, but I, I, think, I think the answer is that every agency has to have a very holistic approach to, to, to metrics, to data, they have to look at, as I say, the, the actual data uh, and behavior that people apply um, through on the web. You also have to look at the, the implicit data based on the kind of people they are. You put it all together, um, you know, and, and you know, you need, unless you've got a, a lot of great data analysts in an agency these days, it's very difficult to survive. Um, and, and you know, you need to be able to looking at looking at that, every aspect of it. And of course, the other thing we can do is we can serve different content now, depending on how people respond. We can personalize, including the emails, the content, the video, whatever, the blogs, whatever. Um, so I think you know that that is you know that the, the, the Adobe Cloud is you know one great example of that. I think there are a lot of examples of 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 our ability now to use you know, technology in real time to measure effectiveness um, and have put it all together in a way that we can we can construct a campaign um, that we know is going to going to deliver a result. But I think the important thing is, you know, it's now in real time, isn't it? It's now the fact that we're going to constantly evolve a campaign based on what behaviors are exhibited by our customers. Whereas in the old days, you produce something, you get it out, you see what the response is and you do another one. You know, now we evolve it all the time. Um, and again, that's the brilliance of, um, you know, the digital world we live in. That's, uh, I mean, I mean, you're the third first to say this. So it's, and I have to believe that this is, this is the validated approach that uh, being, being applied to the most developed markets in terms of digital penetration has become part of everyone's seamless life. You cannot live without it. Uh, yeah. And, it's, and yeah. it's, it's considered ridiculous to even ask someone to live without it. It's almost close to oxygen. So uh, now I, I, want, I want to bring up another, another point that I brought up uh, with the earlier participants in this. It's something that I'm actually interested in as a person. So uh, agencies in the past would build up their own reputations and have portfolios that would speak for their work. Uh, given the advent of digital, and social. How does an agency market itself? That's my first part of the question. And how do you allow yourself? I mean, how do you reach out to potential partners in the technology space or in the brand space to help you out in areas areas or capabilities that you are unaware of? Okay. Uh, I mean, the marketing side of it, I'd say that you know, ultimately, you know, it is a relatively small community. I mean, you know. Even in even in, in, in London, where clearly there's a lot of international businesses and a lot of the work we do as an agency, a lot of agencies in London do, you know, campaigns all, all around the world. But in reality, uh, there, there are, you know, there are a certain number of companies, there are all sorts of uh, intermediaries, you know, organizations that put clients and agencies together. There is the, the trade press, of course, the, there are all sorts of surveys and league tables. And so I think really from a marketing point of view, you know, you have to be present in all these. You have to have relationships with, with all those different people, and uh, that's a source of business. Uh, uh, and our website, of course, not surprisingly, is a very important source of business. Um, and you know, we do, you know, we, we do our own, you know, email campaigns, and we do a whole range of sort of uh, a PR that, that that generates, you know, our our name, what we stand for, and our work. So I think that fundamentally, you know, that hasn't changed, other than the fact that interestingly. The whole debate around content is, of course, is what, what we're doing as an agency. We're constantly getting our content out there to make sure that people respond, and we can you know, can look at who's who's responding to it. So, so we're doing that in the same way. I think that you know, in terms of in terms of uh, technology uh, link ups, I think that uh, you know, there's various organisations. There's a there's a there's a fantastic organisation in London called Tech London Advocates, which uh, I don't even know about, but I mean, fantastic. You know, linked into Tech City. There's also an organisation we're involved with called the Bakery, which is like an incubator for tech businesses in, in Shoreditch. Basically, um, you know, for us and also our, our relationship, uh, you know, through the Brighton, uh, it's on the south coast of England, that community has developed since we made our, our acquisition down there. 
But, but I think what we have to do now as an agency is we have to constantly look at, um, and we do that, you know, we have, we look at, you know, startups, we look at, uh, the, the, the moment we're talking to a, a, a really cool company that basically is at the forefront of augmented reality, and we're looking at developing a campaign for one of our clients in that area, it's very appropriate. So what we've done is we found, you know, you know, two or three guys, really great company, they're, they're particularly at the forefront of that. So we're always farming, we're always looking for great relationships with really, really uh, progressive technology businesses. Yes, we have in our business all the capabilities we need to have, but there are going to be areas of R&D, if you like. There's going to be areas that people are going to develop. That uh, So through these relationships with, with the bakery, with other incubators, that's how we, we keep on top of it and we make sure those relationships are, are alive. And I think that's vital for any agency now to be able to do that. Uh, you had me at augmented reality. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, a big fan of, I'm a big fan of how that can be applied from uh, an on-ground experience as opposed to just uh, the idea of you're at your home, you're, you're in front of your, your device, whatever that may be, a laptop, tablet, or a phone, and you're having this one-on-one -on -one experience as opposed to having a group experience. I think that that has more value. But again, how you tied in it with sales is a big a question mark that comes up, especially in in our part of the world, uh, in terms of uh, is there any immediate call to action right after the person uh, takes part in any event or any interaction with the technology? Uh, but so if I was, I for example, forward. yeah, but I I completely agree. But I think you know, if I was saying to you, if I was if I was trying to sell you something right now, and I could I could show you how this thing was going to be part of your life and how it's going to make your home better or, or whatever it, I was selling you, I could actually show you today almost five demonstrations for augmented reality. Yeah, you know, there's a greater chance you're going to buy from me, and and I think that. Anything that, in my view, improves the customer experience or potential customer experience through yeah. buying, buying a particular product uh, yeah. is going to ultimately generate a greater sale. And, and, you know, clearly, again, going back to the metrics conversation, we need to prove that and we need to show the evidence of that and we need to show how the data links up. But I think that, that can be done. And, and uh, you know, again, all these things are helping the sale uh, more likely, make it more likely to happen. Definitely. Uh, and uh, again, I, I recognize that you have a uh, limited time, and you've taken out uh, a chunk a chunk before your uh, next meeting. No problem. Just the absolute absolute last question that I want to ask, uh, as opposed to, you know, and and thanking you for the answer from before. Uh, the advice that you have for CMOs in this era, keeping in mind uh, the capabilities that need they need to build, as per what we have discussed. And this, not just CMOs on on the brand side, but also on the agency side. There are people uh, looking at the uh, marketing or lead generation or the uh, brand awareness, corporate brand building of agencies as well as technology partners, as well as, for example, when I say technology partners, I mean there's a company that is uh, that you're buying the technology from that's creating the augmented reality platform. Whether they're hacking Kinect or whatever else they're doing, there is some element of tech in there. So what advice would you give to those agencies in terms of what they need to look, uh, look at in the future from the agency uh, brand management perspective and tech perspective? And finally, the brands that you cater at the end of the day, like the Airway brand and the the the... The brand, the brand with the master chef fellow, I forgot his name exactly. But how would yeah. you advise them to go about their business from this point forward, whether they're on their B two B on the on the B two C perspective? Okay, I mean, from an agency perspective, I'd say that um, you know what what is what is important is uh, you know to to embed clearly you know technology and technology relationships in in, in everything you do as a business. Uh, you know, we've discussed the importance of, of that. We're just reflecting people's lives today, really. But I think having those relationships uh, potentially with businesses who are particularly strong in, in, in emerging areas of technology that you don't necessarily have investments in internally is, is important to have that. So I think that's, that's very important. And I think that any agency that, that does that has clearly potentially got an edge. Uh, and, and I would advise, you know, all agencies to do that, as, as many, you know, as many are. Uh, there's no doubt about it. You know, some fantastic agencies doing that all the time. But I think that's really, you know, where the excitement is and, and the potential for, for greater growth for our clients. I think I think with a, with a client community, I think that um, you know again there hasn't been a you know through also I know this through my relationship you know 
uh, chairman of the Multi Society, is that, that in many ways there hasn't been a better time for, I think, for CMOs because, you know, if we look at those great businesses of the, we always talk about, you know, Amazons and Apples of this world where, you know, they, they are, you know, they are fundamentally marketing driven businesses. They've thought about the customer experience. They've thought about how they can market and how they can sell things. So if there's a time, you know, when the, there's, there's a, there's a, there's an argument to say that the marketing, the CMO should be the le a leader uh, in the business. Now's a great time because, you know, they can really mobilize that organization. They can help champion the customer. They can help champion the digital experience. And I think that, uh, you know, it's a great time really for, for, for a CMO to, to look at the world and the business through the eyes of the consumer and the way they're interacting with the digital space. Uh, and, and so, you know, we, we say this a lot of the marketing society, you know, we're all about inspiring bolder leadership. Uh, and that's really, a, a, you know, a fantastic time. Couldn't be a better time to inspire bolder leadership amongst marketeers than there is now with, with all the uh, resources that they have available to them. Uh, definitely. Uh, you know, the, the biggest, uh, the, the change that we're seeing right now is uh, we, there was a study that we, we referenced quite a bit from a company called Trango, and the study basically said that in 2013, people were all over social and digital. Uh, and that was only from a perspective, it was very strange, but it was only from the perspective of, uh, you know, he's doing it, so why don't I do it? And my CEO thinks that it's important, so we should we need to get on board. But they didn't look after they didn't think ROI. They thought, you know, we, we're going to get a load of people on our page. We're going to get a lot of people uh, engaging with us. But then beyond that, they didn't have any aspect to it because, the again, it was it was all about it's sort of a competition between the CMOs of various uh, type, types of companies. And they were all about the, the buzzword, like you're mentioning buzzword right now is big data. The buzzword at the time was reach and engagement. So there's a competition between everyone about who can engage the most people. But engagement and then it just stops. Uh, there was no concept of how many conversions are happening. So the new era of 2014, when we asked the same CMOs, like, what do you, uh, the, 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 sorry, the research had asked what the same CMOs, you know, what would you do this year? They said, you know, uh, the, the pitch was great. We, we got all the education we needed from the agency side, but now we're looking for accountability. Now we want to see what that does. And this is why, like I mentioned, Adobe Marketing Cloud before, the biggest pull towards something like Google Analytics, which is, uh, cheap and small, uh, low end, and then there's something called uh, Adobe Marketing Cloud or the other sorts of marketing clouds on the market, uh, which not only give you the insight on why people are coming to your page and where they're coming from, and possibly the entire journey uh, going the, the up and down the funnel, but also gives you an idea of what, why the conversions are taking place at certain segments and the sub-segments that are existing within your page. So that's, uh, that's definitely something that's coming up, and I really Wish you the best of luck in this area, especially that augmented reality project, which I intend yeah. to take the study on. Yeah, thank you. And I think the other thing that you know you just touch on there, just to reinforce, is that you know, and I don't want to make a, a, a plug here, but I will. But you know, the the IPA Social Works group that we're running at the moment, and and I tell you that is that is exactly your point that the rigor that's traditionally been applied to all other forms of advertising and direct marketing in terms of proving the ROI of social, which we, we absolutely know is, is, is absolutely a cornerstone of all communications these days. But we absolutely want to make sure those metrics are in place and, 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 and using all the data and using all the techniques you just talked about. And, and that's what this, this group is trying to do. And we're looking at case studies. And if anybody out there has got some fantastic case studies uh, of, of social media where they can prove, you know, we can look at it and we can prove the ROI, we want to build up that data bank uh, because we know that, that it works. We just want the evidence uh, uh, to prove to clients that uh, and to agencies that they should invest more money in it. Yeah, uh, you you brought up a, uh, quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of capability that you're working towards. And uh, a lot of people that I've interviewed, a lot of people that I'm connected to, they come to mind. So I'm just going to after we're done with this call, right. I'm just going to I'm just going to connect you to a lot of people that, I, that I know in various tech and agency spaces. That's very kind of you. Uh, there are even people who, who who talk to me and say, "I dream of this," and they don't believe it's possible. And we when we, when we tell them that, that there's there's a there's a way of going about uh, that entire uh, there, there, the technology exists, they don't actually believe me. Uh, but obviously, speaking to you will will change the game considerably. Uh, so anyway, thanks, Stephen. Uh, Thank we'll you. talk a bit. We'll we'll just talk a bit off the record right now. So I'll just connect okay. you with everyone that I can. And um, I thank good. you for your time, and uh, I hope to have a different session with you on, on a completely new topic a few months or a month down the road on something new that you learn and new case studies that you work on. Appreciate that. Really good to speak to you, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's been good. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Take care. Okay, cheers. Bye.